All right, well, I'm here with Chuck Pavlich, who is Director of New Product Development at Terra Nova. And Chuck's going to tell us a lot of the new items and also maybe some of the things they're excited about and maybe even a little bit on their unrooted program uh, that they now offer. So, Chuck, it's over to you. Love to. This way. So, viewer, uh, we have three new leucanthemums, and these are all genetic dwarves, so they have great habits naturally without the use of PGRs. This is macaroon, and it's named for the tasty coconut fluffy confection. Cool. The flowers start off a nice icy green, and then they eventually open up to a nice full daisy. Great branching at the base, great foliage, and this plant presents as a smooth, short dome. Looks fantastic in a container, looks fantastic in the garden. Next is Luna, and Luna is a nice, bright yellow. It's a long-lasting color, and the flowers on Luna last a long time. The coolest thing about this plant, I think, is that this one-year-old plant in the photo had 96 flowers on it at the same time. So it's just an amazing flower machine. Blooms and blooms and blooms. And then finally we have Belgian Lace. And Belgian Lace in a five inch pot looks like a florist pot mum. So it's upright, great branching, nice frilly blossoms, a very sweet old fashioned look to it. Another nice thing about these is that these are all low vernalization requirement. So Oregon's winters, normally they're a little bit cool, but this year we only had three frosts. This is only gonna require about 40 days, sub 40, to bloom. So super easy for almost everybody in the country. Begonias. Begonia breeding is really, really fun, I think. I'm the begonia breeder. And I get to use all new species that most people don't get a hold of. So while these look like Rex begonias, they're not. We use new species that are coming out of the mountains of China, Taiwan, and Vietnam. So high heat and humidity, but still cold tolerance. So the hallmark for all of my T-Rex begonias are they have to look perfect in my vernalization house, which is kept at 38 degrees or below. Three of these varieties are now planted in ground at Terra Nova, and they come back every spring. Now I do mulch, but in ground, hmm. cold tolerant. This means that they'll ship really well in a truck, and they'll have to be heated. They'll last longer. They're not subject to cold. They won't wilt. They won't fade. <laughs> And there's, they love high heat too, so these are great new breeding. These are very vigorous because I'm using new species. Old Rexes were inbred and inbred and inbred. And like anything, when you inbreed, you're going to have low vigor. So high vigor, great colors, just fantastic for gardens or containers. Begonias as a whole have such a huge gene pool of species. Yep. I mean, how many species are there in begonia? Uh, I don't know exactly. I know there's you know some 3,200 that they're you know. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Cool We have stuff. no idea what could come. We don't know. And I love that about that. Hucor Champagne. It's, this emerges bright, strong, salmon pink, and then goes to a gold. And then in the summertime, zillions of tiny pink blossoms, just like champagne bubbles, float over this plant. It's really sweet. Hucor Forever Purple. This is our hottest selling Hucor ever, by far has taken off like a rocket. It never changes color. Every other purple on the market, whether it's ours or anyone else's, changes color to a silver or a brown, and this remains pure purple. It loves heat and humidity. It tolerates cold really well. A super new introduction. Beautiful lavender flowers too. It's the first lavender flowered heuchera. Trading heucherellas. Now, heucherellas are a cross between tiarella and heuchera. So it's a bi-generic hybrid. One of the advantages of this is that heucherellas do not ever get rust. So it's a very disease-free plant. This is a trailer. So this is going to trail down in one year's time, about five feet. So consider this uh, a hardy sweet potato vine. Hmm. Great color spring and fall, tiny blossoms that don't interfere with the look of the plant. It's a spiller and a thriller. Hardy to what zone? Oh, these are hardy to zone four. Okay. So these totally rock. This is also very heat and humidity tolerant because p the parents for this were Heuchera villosa, which is native to Georgia and Washington, D.C., and every place where it's hot and humid. And then Tiarella warii, which is Nova Scotia down to Georgia. So loves heat and humidity, performs best east of the Rockies as opposed to the west of the Rockies. 
Monster Hukra. This is Red Lightning. This is one of the largest we've ever, ever, ever bred. So east of the Rockies, this is going to have big 8-inch leaves and be about 2 foot across year one. So it's a monster plant. New foliage emerges bright lemon yellow with bright red veins. And in the fall and winter, those red veins reappear and it's just shocking. A gorgeous plant, loves the heat and humidity. Coreopsis. We launched a whole new line of Coreopsis based on Verticillata breeding. So these are tight, compact, genetic dwarfs. Coreopsis buttermilk was bred to replace Moonbeam. So it's got a great habit, very large flowers, and continues to flower all through the summer until it freezes. With all of our Coreopsis, we say that they bury their dead, which means that the new flowers go on top of the old flowers, and there's never a problem with cleanup. Lightning bug, a great dwarf, a tight mound, brilliant colored flowers. Bengal tiger, a little bit larger with quite large flowers and shocking colors. Uh, two year trials uh, in Michigan, this has just been a total wonderful plant. Stays clean and very winter hardy. A new plant to the world, Terranova created a brand new genera. This is Mucgenia nova flame. And Mucgenias are a hybrid between Mucdenia and Virginia. I read a paper years ago on the theory of clades in plants, and so I crossed a Mucdenia and a Virginia, and we have a whole new genera. So it's got dark green foliage like the Virginia. It's got a rippled edge like the Mucdenia. It's got lots of pink flowers in the spring, zillions of them, and in the fall, this incredible scarlet foliage. Hmm. Anytime the temperature drops below about 40 degrees, this color is going to come out and it just lasts and lasts and lasts. Totally deciduous, super hardy, zone 4-5. Now did you get that name out of Bailey's Dictionary or did you guys come up with it? We came up with the name but it is accepted by the botanist. So okay. this is its official designation by the world as Ex Machina. Great. This is a new Virginia Spring Flame. This plant in full bloom looks like an azalea from a distance because it covers itself with these great stalks of massive flowers, averaging about 37 flowers per truss. So it's a huge bloomer. Love this plant. The foliage is purple black in the winter, but a healthy purple black. It's glossy. It looks like patent leather. One of the best new ones I've ever seen. Mm. Terra Nova has a huge selection of coleus. This is all of our own breeding, and it was meticulously bred over a number of years' time. Every plant in the Terra Nova lineup is no pinch, no PGR. So never are you going to have to worry about any labor in this plant. You'll put one input in the pot and have fabulous results. On our banner here, this is Honey Bear. And Honey Bear, that's one input in a 10-inch pot in 10 weeks' time. One plant. One input without a pinch, without PGRs. It's amazing. just amazing. You betcha. Amazing. A whole huge selection of dwarves, semi-dwarves, uprights, cascades, ground covers. We've got every use possible for a coleus. So no matter the smaller foliage, I can understand no pinch. Yep. Or the big foliage, the same. The same. And no growth rag, no nothing. Nope. Do not use any PGRs. At every leaf node, there's a break every time, every plant. Great. So this is going to be a great addition to actually anybody's landscape. Two uh, euphorbias that we're bringing back. This is Jade Dragon. And Jade Dragon has these gorgeous heads on there that kind of hang like mm, a Loch Ness monster head. And out of these red heads, come brilliant lime green flowers and it's just an incredible contrast between the red, the green, and the bluish foliage in the winter times. Mm. A nice hybrid. Golden Glory is an oldie but a goodie also. So new foliage is brilliant scarlet red and when it's in full bloom the plant is covered from stem to stern with flowers. A nice acidy lime yellow, a great contrast and just a phenomenal pollinator attractor. Beautiful plant. Echinaceas. We have a huge breeding program in Echinaceas. We've worked really hard to improve the plants from the one stem wonders now to multiple heads naturally. So, 
This is Glowing Dream, and it's a natural dwarf. But look at the crown count. More crowns equal more survivability in the wintertime and more flowers. And that's without doing any work. So not chemically manipulated, we've bred in more crowns. We've got more great ones on the way. And this color is so hard to describe, it's like electric watermelon. Lasting colors, great habits. In the Dream series, we have Glowing Dream, we have Amazing Dream, we have a brilliant orange called Tangerine Dream, and a lemon yellow called Daydream. New Lithodoras. This is our first introduction to Lithodora world. And this is a very large flowered sky blue flower. They're about dime sized in diameter, so really? immense and super plush. And again, look at the branching without any work. This is going to be a great dense ground cover. This is really a fabulous plant. Bronera Silver Charm. Now, one of our first people to visit our booth asked me if this was grown for its flowers because it has massive flower power. This has been in bloom for about 45 days. So a long time blooming with these light blue flowers and then really sweet heart-shaped foliage. This is faster growing than Jack Frost, slightly larger in the garden than Jack Frost, and much better flowers than Jack Frost. So this is definitely a must for anyone's garden. And then finally, these are Terranova's Agastiques. Years ago, I was hiking in Eastern Oregon, the high desert area, and I came across a little weedy plant that looked kind of sweet, and it was so happy in the desert. I keyed it out, and it was indeed an Agastiques species. So we started working with that little weed, and we bred genetic dwarf Agastiques that have great habits, strong colors, and the great thing is they are virtually impervious to downy mildew. So we're really thrilled with built-in disease resistance, great habits, great colors, and this attracts hummingbirds, it attracts butterflies, it attracts bees, so it's a very sweet plant. That's great. Chuck, I want to thank you, and by the way, I mean, perennials are still growing at a faster rate than annuals are slowing down, I think. Um, like and as people become more and more familiar with the perennials and the breeding improvements, I think it's going to continue. Now, from ePlant Source, I would like to compliment Terra Nova because we like to have the information on our website in the catalog and culture information. And there's a lot of breeders out there who have no culture information available. And if you go on our site and click on the pictures in the catalog for Terra Nova and click on culture notes, you'll see the culture sheets from you folks that you can just pull down, print, and everything else. So you are running a complete shop. Well, so thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right.